Welcome to Chucker TV. I'm Dale Schwetz, and we are live today for the Grand Champions Polo Club for the Polo Gear Challenge. We've been looking forward to this one. Of course, Polo Gear, a big uh, fan, part of the family, Chucker TV family here for many years. And four teams entered. And again, we're going to be at high. We're playing some high goal polo at the Grand Champ Polo Club. The spring season has been a lot of fun as we uh, we, hey, we started off with the Sun Cup. It was an eight, uh, well, 17 to 20 goal tournament. Dudacourt pulling that one out, an 18 goal team. Then we had the spring challenge where uh, two 17 goal teams made it to the finals. And uh, uh, Aspen Valley Polo Club made it, but now we have Palm Beach Equine facing off against Sebu Khan. Sebu Khan in the white jerseys, Palm Beach Equine back in their dark green and maroon jerseys. The uh, four teams also to enter is Duda Corp and Audi. They'll be playing our second game on our double, here, double header today on Friday, and there's a good shot. Of course, Lake Worth Road in the background and the WPL flags flying in the wind right now. Looks like Alec Rodan will be our Mount official today on the Palm Beach Equine team. It'll be the same team as last week. We'll have uh, Brandon Phillips playing the number one on four goals. Nick Rodan will play the number, well, no, Juan Bellini will play the number two on five goals. Nick Rodan will play the number three right here in his new helmet. I like that, Nicky. And uh, on eight goals, and then Dr. Scott Swartman right here in the green helmet will play the number four. At zero goals, an A-rated player. And now the Sebi Khan team. It looks like Pablo Spinacci on the run here. He's going to slam on the brakes. Pablo. And a beautiful neck shot at goal right there to finish that one off. Pablo Spinacci riding some of the top young horses for the Centarita breeding operation. Of course, Melissa Ganzi right here is a good shot of one of them. Pablo, he goes in here. Look at this little pony. Slams on the brakes. Let Dr. Scott Swartland fly by. And then look at that little gap right there in between Swartland and the goal. And an easy dead center shot there. Pablo Polito plays the number one here for the Sebicon team. And he is a force free record with. He scored the winning goal for the the Aspen Valley Polo Club team last week and um, Grant Gansey hit him one on the fly and Pablo just took it down a hundred and thirty yard run to win the game it was breathtaking it was a lot of fun he's gonna play the number one on two goals then you'll go ahead and put I believe they're gonna put Juan Cito Bellini at the number two of course, the ambassador for the U.S. Polo ASSN clothing line. Number three right here, Pablo Spinacci on six goals. And then the number four will be Jared Zenny on six goals. Another ambassador for the U.S. Polo ASSN clothing line. All the ambassadors playing well, on the same team this uh, week. So that's pretty cool. And, of course, uh, Jared coming off that uh, Westchester Cup win. Couple weeks ago, winning, uh, bringing the cup home for the U.S. U.S. against England. I want to congratulate the England team, and of course, England in general. Man, we saw a lot of top players from England play here in uh, Palm Beach and Wellington this season, and it was nice to see them bring a team in. All right, Nikki, on the move, roll down. He's going to override right there. This was going to get turned around, but Sebi Khan will be Pablo. Pablo now moving forward on the gray pony. Look at Dr. Scott Swirling. Oh, Scorland's tuned up now. After a couple weeks of playing high goal polo, man, he's on fire. Pick up the man very early now. Now Zenny. Jared's going to turn this around. Nice play there by Spinacci. Take the man out. Jared, he's going to release this ball looking for Pablo, but stole away by Juan Bellini. Bellini, senior. Uh-oh. They're going to leave that one inside. And it looks like it's going to be, yeah. Bellini and no, they switched up the the uh, team on me here, so I apologize. It looks like Jared's going to go the number two for the Subiton team, and Juancito Bellini will go the number four. Juancito's going to pick up his first goal today. Well done. Loose ball play right here. Everybody overrides. You see Bellini picks it up swiftly, gets out in front here. The, it's all about the approach shot. Then he keeps his shoulders down. The head follows, and an easy tap shot there for the ambassador of the U.S. Polo Aces and clothing line. Got a one goal difference here on the uh, Palm Beach Equine team getting one goal on handicap. I don't know if we got that one. Uh, we might have got that one reversed here or, or if we got that one in yet, guys. I guess we do. Oh, yeah, Palm Beach Equine. They're going to have, uh, they're going to get their one goal. Yes, we have two goals. Perfect. One goal on handicap for Palm Beach Equine, our 17 goal team. We have two goals, one by Spinacci and one by Juancito. And that's how you get your two to one after our first courtesy change of the day. I'll talk about the courtesy change one time, just in case you're new to it. We will stop the game halfway through for basically the four-legged athlete. Anytime it's a dead ball play, a bowl in, a knock in, or a penalty shot. 
and uh, the umpire will go ahead and stop and give the uh, players an opportunity to change their ponies. And we try to keep it under 45 seconds. It is a tournament condition. If you'd like to use this at your club, just get with your tournament, um, your tournament advisors committee, and uh, talk about it and use it. It works, trust me. And uh, you'll find that the chuckers become very, very fast, and you'll see less fouls in, in most of the games as we have everybody on a fresh athlete, four legged athlete. All six chuckers. Six chucker polo we're playing today. For any new viewers, of course, we are playing on a field as big as nine football fields and 150 yards, uh, about one, well, 300 long, 160 wide. And of course, the ball can be hit easily 150 yards at 120, 120 miles an hour. So it you know, makes it a very fast game as it's going to be Bellini. Juancito is going to get out in front on the gray pony rider. I like this gray pony rider getting into the bridle a little bit for him. Now slamming on the brakes. And well done, Brandon. Keeping the pressure on. Bellini lays this one out in front. And Nikki. Ooh, he keeps it on the field right there. Wow, Rodan. This might be a little snooker play. I like this one. Why not? I mean, you got everybody there. Now he's got everybody flat-footed. And instead of giving the white team an opportunity to line up on the knock-in, Nick Rodan pulls a high goal move on the end line right there. <laughs> Gets everybody flat-footed. Now look at this. He's got the Palm Beach Equine team working this ball over center field. And now he's going to get a whistle on the play. And he is over center. So we might see an opportunity at a penalty four for the Palm Beach Equine team. Let's check it out. The Polo Gear Challenge. Here you go. You make the call. This ball is going to go along the board right there. Zanny at the number two. Nikki, check your shoulder. Keep an eye on all the players coming in from behind. There goes Pablo. Now Nikki takes it forward. Here comes Spinacci. And he's going to ride in from behind. And that's why Nikki looks back over his shoulder. And now you get the penalty shot from way, I guess they can let it go from way out there. And there you go. They use the penalty five from the spot there instead of bringing it in. And Brandon Phillips picks up his first goal of the day. And that's the way you, uh, you finish off a penalty five right here. Look, Nikki uh, Bellini way down there. Look at roll. Looks like Bob right here is going to be Brandon. Takes his man wide and then finishes it off on the near side. That's the way you do it, the man, the line, the ball. Well done, Brandon Phillips. And well done, Bellini. Working that penalty five here. This is a tough uh, Palm Beach Equine team. They've been in the mix every uh, tournament here. They were, they were in the mix for the Sun Cup. And um, they got edged out by a goal right at the end. And then, of course, that was won by the Dudacorp team. And then they went to the finals here of the spring challenge. And again, what a game that was, all the way down to the end. And uh, just losing an OT by that goal by Pablo Polito. All right, Bellini, and that's Juancito looking for Jared Zinni going forward. Not used to seeing Jared wear the number two, but it's going to be fun watching him play there today. Pablo with a nice little flip shot. That will stay on the field, but Roldan with 123 on the clock will control. Nicky. I used to see Nicky in his new helmet here. I like it. It looks like the, uh, he's wearing his Audi colors today. And he plays a lot for the Audi polo team also. Today, wearing actually all month, and wearing the Palm Beach equine colors. And now Brandon Phillips, Scott Swartland, Dr. Scott Swartland, bringing a very strong team here with Phillips, Bellini, and Roldan. Now the give and go. Nobody home, and it's going to be Juancito Bellini. Bellini looking to open this one up. He's got Spinacci and Zenny running on this one. Jared, well done. Pablo's going to take the man up, but look at Brandon. Doesn't take his eyes off him now. Uh oh, look at who's got the horsepower. Oh, Dr. Scott Swarland. He baited him in there. Now for the back shot. Oh, swinging a miss by the number four. Nick comes to save the day, but Pablo Polito will get a ball moving forward and now turned around by Roldan again. Good action here in our first chucker. Only two penalties. Very clean. Uh, opening chucker. Now Nikki. Nick the stick. Working the ball quickly. Down the field here. Spinacci comes in. Little kick of the pony. They got to give him one play right there. Spinacci pulling out of the way. Not the ball Nikki was looking for and stole away again by Bellini. As the clock clicks down, Juancito leans way out there, showing the athletic ability. Now with one stirrup out of his foot, out of his stirrup, 
They get the ball right there, center field. Now to end our first chucker play. So a two to two here after one. And of course, we are watching the 2019 Polo Gear Challenge Cup. We'll get everybody on some fresh horses and we'll be right back. James Foti with Chucker TV. We're here with Juan Bolini, who's going to teach us some polo words in Spanish. What do you got for us today? Hello, uh, Chucker TV fans. Okay, we're going to start, Jim, with the, uh, as my equipment. We started with a polo helmet, okay. with in Spanish is casco. 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 Casco is okay. helmet in Spanish. He o casco. Casco. And then okay. we can follow with the polo mallet. And then in Spanish is taco. Polo mallet, taco. That's very taco. That's not a difficult word. Everybody knows uh, that. Taco, taco Bell. Taco yeah. Bell, uh, yeah. So we got that. And then we have the whip. And call in Spanish called fusta. So you can. You, you fusta. 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 Yeah, fusta. Good. good. Okay. That's the, that's the first step. Well, thank you. That's your polo word of the day in Spanish. All right, welcome back, and there you go, some polo words. So now you know why they want to yell, fusta, 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 what it means out there. It means whip, whip, whip. Okay, look at this, Mike Ferrer, watching from sunny South Florida. Let's go, Juan Jr. Ooh, we got a Juan Cito Bellini fan there. As you can see, you can interact with us here on Chucker TV, so please interact with us. Get on the uh, Facebook conversation, we would love that. And of course, if you'd like to know any other, well, polo words, which are very cool, let us know which words you want to know, and we'll see if we can get uh, Juan Bellini to go live and tell you. Make sure you keep it clean, please. Here you go. On this ball, it's going to be two to two here for our second chucker action. And uh, we're live for the Grand Champion Polo Cup. It's field number five this morning or afternoon. And uh, thank you for joining us here on a Friday. First round of the Polo Gear Challenge Cup. You know, Polo Gear, of course, uh, co-founder Gary Felders. Of course, Gary Feller, the big polo player himself, man. He had nearly 40 years in the game of polo, playing everything from zero to 26 goal polo. And uh, he's been a longtime supporter uh, of the Grand Champions Polo Club and the Aspen Valley Polo Club. And so uh, we have a great relationship with Gary, of course, and the polo gear brand. And uh, so you can go back and actually check him. I, I think it goes way back. I have to check with our executive producer, Mike Ferrer, but I think... Uh, well, we have a relationship with Gary and the Polo Gear brand from the beginning. They've been very supportive of the Grand Champions, Aspen Valley, and, of course, Chucker TV. All right, right here you see Juancito, who's, uh, well, Mike Furr's favorite player right there. He said, go Juancito, takes that ball inside, gets a little kick from the pony, and he'll pick up his second goal of the day. And a little pony goal, but we'll give that one to the number four in the white jersey. All right, on the bowling, picked up here. And the uh, Seb, uh, Papi Jiquan, look at a little flat here in the first two chuckers, but they'll do that to you. They are uh, they're a very strong team. Oh, Bellini, look at it, trying to take out Spinacci. He couldn't get there. Spinacci does. Now the back shot, but Bellini, so keen on the polo field, he just pushed him a little bit wide there, and there's a good shot of well, Juan Bellini, a senior. And uh, he just pushes them wide and gives them a little opportunity to give them a chance to make a goal there. And I was saying this, Papa Chico and team, they, um, they'll come strong at the end. You got to be careful of them. They keep it close all the way down to the end. They don't try to rush the game. They kind of let it come to them. 
And you know because they have a lot of distinguished players out there. Of course, Bellini, a former ACO player, Nick on eight now, and Brandon on five goals and still going up. And Dr. Swartland actually played a lot of polo. He's 30, 40 plus years in the game also. So when you got a team that understands the game that well, no need to rush the game. They let it come to them. And uh, they, uh, they've they been very good at finishing. So we'll see what happens here. Spinacci. Pablo will slow it down and go, oh, yeah, that's what I like to see. And oh, did Nicky change his helmet? I believe he did. And that could be trouble. As um, I don't know why he did. We'll have to check with our field side correspondent on that one. But he started out. Looked like he started out with a. Well, it looked like it might have been an, an, like I told you, like an Audi helmet. It looked like a red and black, but then he switched back into his dark and day glow green. Chucker TV, look at this little pony. I've talked a lot about this little bay stud pony right here of Jared Zenny's. It gets a lot of, oh, just off the left side, but a very, this horse like the scamper. Watch it drop his head right here as it busts loose down the field. And uh, man, he gets a ton done on this little bay pony. He plays it a couple chuckers, play it half the chucker. Remember with the courtesy change, you'll see a lot of these horses play at the beginning of the chucker. And of course they will come back and play at the end or they'll play in another chucker. They'll split them up. And it looks like with 2.43, they're gonna stop the clock right here and we're gonna have a courtesy change. And we'll see who goes ahead and jumps on this one. A good shot of Brandon Phillips there, the number one. You know, Polo Gears uh, sports top sponsors. It was established in 1993 and incorporated in Florida. It manufactures, uh, distributes, and sells polo products to all polo players, all teams, everything. Polo events worldwide, and uh, a lot of the most a lot of the polo jerseys you see out there are made by, manufactured by the Polo Gear brand. It's a premier retailer, and it always it's uh, well big time in clothing, accessory, safety equipment, and polo saddles. They have their own polo gear saddle. So if you're interested in checking it out, of course uh, you can go, and uh, well you can just go just go right to the store here if you're in Florida. It's uh, 3500 Fairlane Farms Road. Yeah, and uh, you know, so when you're there, well, 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 when you're there buying some Polar Gear product, you can watch, well, Chucker TV, because they play our broadcast there in the studio, and they play it like on a 60-inch screen, I believe, a couple of them, and they have a great viewing area where you can sit in there and try boots on and try clothes and make it a whole day of it. Shop at the Polar Gear, and I believe we have a few commercials out there. You'll be able to see commercial Polo Gear as uh, we have a few of our Trucker TV family actually went shopping to get organized. They can, uh, they can set you up from A to Z with Polo Gear. The, uh, the name fits, and it's a lot of fun there. Go check out. Uh, you'll have a lot of fun there. All right, on the Mac, back to the action here. We're 2.06 on the clock. So we picked up here now by Bellini again, looking for Brandon going forward. Brandon, nobody home but Papa Polito. Brandon initiating the right-of-way there. Ooh, and he gives it up. It looked like uh, Pablo had some distance there, but maybe too far off to the left side, but he gives it up to Brandon, and here comes number one, Phillips. Oh, Jared Zenny comes back strong, gets the back shot. Nobody's going to get to this ball but Bellini. Now, Bellini, Bellini, my favorite summer drink again, facing off against each other. They did that in the finals, and Juan Cito, Juan Bellini Jr., he came out ahead. Let's see what happens today. Now it's going to be Juan Cito. He's going to lay this ball out. Good rotation here by the Sebicon team. And Pablo coming from left to right. And he's going to get whistled up right there. As it did look like Brandon, the number one. Phillips had the right of way. Remember, player following the ball has a right of way over a player moving from right to left. Here you go. Brandon following the ball. Sebicon player, white player moving from right to left. Very easy to see that right of way violation. And they'll drop this ball from the spot. So 118 left here in our second chucker action. And um, so we've got a lot of fun. Make sure you stop out on Sundays. We had an awesome Mother's Day weekend. I want to thank all the moms for coming out and enjoying it, spending it with the Chucker TV and Grand Champions family. We had a great group out there. Remember, join us every Sunday. And that'll be at 1130. Play at 10, 1130. Play on field one and two. 
And of course, we have food and refreshments for all of our fans. Everything's free. Come on and check it out. Here we go. On the move. 57 seconds. Bellini and Pablo. Neutral play. Picked up by Nick Roldan. Nick, you look quiet here in the second chucker. Now Nick. Roldan's got to be hustled here by Bellini. And now he'll open this one back up on the near side back shot. But it'll be Zanny. And here you go. Why, once again, great rotation by the boys in the white jerseys. You're going to see a very strong four-player rotation today with this team. Now Zenny, miss hit ball, backed up by Brandon, stolen away by Pablo. Palillo's going to get another piece of it, and that one's going to get whistled up with 21 seconds on the clock, so that'll end our second chucker play. We'll let our umpire uh, figure this one out. Kind of look like to me maybe like there's a reaching call here. Let's see. Watch right here. Brandon's going to come right here and see if he doesn't reach back right here, yeah, looked like he reached or came across. So we got a whistle there, so we'll let our mount official figure that one out. And, oh, they're going to hit it? Well, maybe we're off on a time a little bit. Okay, 36 seconds. We will adjust our clock as need be here in the studio, of course, and out the field. Sometimes they, they adjust back and forth. So about three seconds before the warning horn, open goal penalty two. Ooh, and there you go. That's going to end our second chucker play down now with the Sebicon team in the lead here, 4-2. So stay with us. You're watching Chucker TV. And welcome back, Chucker TV, as the flags are flying. And look at this, D Sanchez. Oh, hello, Chucker TV. Checking in from San Diego, California. Yeah, man. Hey, uh, D, I love San Diego. I've actually surfed everywhere from Oceanside down to Ensenada, Mexico. And, of course, if you're from San Diego, you know there's a lot of cool surf spots there. And, of course, the Ranch of Santa Fe Polo Club. And I actually learned, uh, well, started my professional career there, my brother and I. So, uh, thanks, D, for checking in. And, of course, man, get on the Facebook conversation. Let us know what's happening, where you're calling, you're watching from today. Uh, what club you play at. We always love that. So we can give your club a shout-out and, uh, you know, give some recognition to all the polo clubs around the nation. And, of course, we are still on. If you go ahead and share our broadcast, of course, we're keeping the names of all the people that share our broadcast for some new apparel, Chucker TV apparel, which will be coming out this summer. And uh, so we're putting that all together. So share our broadcast, and we'll keep uh, we're keeping track of that. And we, uh, we thank it. Thank you for uh, making us the pull, uh, leader of the Polo Broadcast. And remember, Chucker TV, we love the Polo. Here we go. It's going to be Boyle Juancito to jump on it. And, ooh, catching Nikki Roldan. Oh, Nikki doesn't like that. But well done. Good read here by the number four. Uh, as Bellini just reads this perfectly because Nikki's not an easy guy to catch on a turn. You watch this. Watch how quick Juancito is here. He's going to kern out here. Watch, you got to turn real quick and get on it. And there's Nikki. Nikki Roldan. Man, I'm surprised. Nikki came from way out to the left side there. He must think he's uh, you're not seeing him out there now. Roldan is very quick, but he's going to get caught there. And that's going to bring him in here. And you got to watch out now. This is a tough Sebicon team. As, uh, you know, Zenny, uh, Palito, 
and Bellinia play together, Pablo, he mix and matches on every team so well, Spinacci. And uh, I think Spinacci had his high, his eight-goal polo player. Like you said, he actually had an accident way back, broke his leg. He had to take a little time off, but back in the uh, saddle and just an amazing pilot. As he said, this guy's so strong on a polo pony. And that's why I said you will see. And I, Juan Bellini actually let us know last week that kind of gave us some insight of what was happening in the barns at the Santa Rita Polo Farm and actually Pablo Spinacci riding piloting some of the top young horses that are bred from the Santa Rita breeding operation. Here comes Jerry Zenny. Jared, that is picture perfect. And now in dead center right there. And Zenny's gonna pick up the old, the penalty four, two for two from the penalty line. This kid has been awesome from the penalties here during our spring season. Been a lot of fun watching Jared play at the Grand Champions Polo Club. Now, of course, this is the Polo Gear Challenge Cup. We're going to be talking about Polo Gear all weekend long. You want to check it out. Polo Gear. All right, on the bowling, going to be picked up by Swartland. He'll leave this one for Nikki. Nikki, again, been very quiet here in the first uh, half. Let's see if he gets it rolling here. That ball is going to bounce off a pony. Now, Nick, Nick. Taking it to the right side, flips to the near side, back to the center. Spinacci will move it forward and back to Roldan. That was kind of weird. Bounce right back to Nikki. He's going to go back to the inside with it. Look at number three moving. Oh, leaves that one behind. Good rotation here by Brandon Phillips. Now he'll slow it up. He's got Bellini right there in a rumble seat. Swardling kicks it forward. Brandon leaves it for Roldan. Nikki scoots it by the number two, gets by the number four, backed up again by Bellini, and stolen away. Oh! As Bellini, the Bellini is going to get caught there on a definitely an off-speed ride-off. Watch Zenny on the outside. Here comes J Jared right here, and then watch Bellini, boom, right there. And that's going to be, uh, well, uh, uneven off speed and well it actually broke all the rules on a ride off on that one so you remember you got to be less than 45 degrees that was about 80 degrees and then you got to be about the same relative speed and he was a little bit slow so it gave you a good idea there on how the ride off is it wasn't moving fast both players won't, weren't moving fast but again it all based on the relative speed so they'll take one to center and the Papa Chiquan team will regroup here now Jared I believe he made one, or he, I know he was right there last week with the five from the center, and he's been hitting the ball very long, very deep. Here comes Eddie, mounted so well. Look at this beautiful pony he's riding right here. Jared, that ball is going to go off to the left side. Bellini tries to get there. Look at this next shot by Pablo Polito. Oh, yes. That is Super City right there. Well done, Pablo. And that's why I told you. Or that's Panacci. I might have gave it to the wrong person. Let's see. It's going to be Spinacci. I, I apologize, Pablo. No, it was Pablo Plito. Pablo, yeah, it was Pablo Plito. And look at that near side next shot. I thought it was a blue helmet. And that is just picture. Look at that dead center. Not an easy angle, and also getting it done in front of Juan Bellini. He's so strong on the defensive side of the ball. Now, hook from Zenny, and, and uh, Brandon's going to want a high hook there, and I think he's going to get it. So, yeah, you make the call on this one. I think this is a great call by Mr. Alex Roldan in the purple stripes right there. See that? Way too high as both of those heads of the mallets were above Brandon Phillips' shoulder. Now remember the rule, the mallet head must be below the shoulder, and that's why you're allowed to hook the back shot, because a lot of times players take a back shot and they have their mallet head hanging below their shoulder. Even though their hand is above the shoulder, their mallet head is below, and that's why you can get that hook, all right? You want to keep that mallet head above, and that's why you can't get hooked there. Now, of course, in the arena, it's below the horse's hind end. The mallet must be below because of the arena being a smaller place to play. Now you have another whistle, 
and it looks like Brandon Phillips is going to be uh, is going to get the energy moving forward here for Palm Beach Equine. And this is what they do. Keep an eye on this one. Right away violation coming. That ball's got a little 45 degree angle and Brandon jumps right on it. And Pablo Palio gets caught on the right away violation. And that ball's going to be inside the 60 yard line. So Nikki right there. And we're going to have our final courtesy change of the first half. Well, this game's been going very quick. Again, if you have any questions about our, um, oh, anything about the, the uh, polo gear, let us know. As it looks like uh, as we get on the, everyone change the pony right here. And um, let's see where are we at here. So it looks like we have all call. We have uh, Chris Curley watching. Hey, Chris, if you're checking in, buddy, and of course check out Chris Curley on Instagram. Got all the fine products out there, Chris. And look at this. He's gonna be Nikki Rodan's gonna walk up here. And this is a pretty shot, easy shot for Nikki. Open goal, penalty two from the first dot, 30-yard shot. He's going to lay that one dead center. Sandy Freeman, our friend from Montreal, Canada. Sandy. Checking out Chucker TV today. Sandy, thanks for checking us out all the time. You are a friend of the families here at Chucker TV. Always checking in all our broadcasts, representing up there in Montreal, Canada. All right, Nikki Rodan with 3.05 on the clock. Three goal difference here. Let's see if they can get a, uh, get a run going as this is, uh, they did this in the last couple games. The Palm Beach Equine team came alive and backed up again now by Zenny. Closing the door every time the Palm Beach Equine team tries to score. It's going to be Brandon under the neck here. He'll back this one up, looking for Nick Rodan. He's got him in the far coffin corner, though. Now he'll slow it down, try to go back to the inside. And Nick, Nicky, going to shoot one from way out on the sideline. Will that one stay on the field? Yes, it will. And here comes Sebi Khan and Pablo. The two Pablos moving forward here. Pelito's going to take it forward. He's going to leave it for Spinacci. Spinacci's got all day, so he'll take his time right here. And send everybody, ooh, Pablo, watch out. He's going to slam on the brakes, go to the near side. Ooh, Bellini almost gets through the hook and flip back here now. And that's going to be picked up here by Bellini. And Bellini looking around to make sure he didn't foul on a good play. He hit it right to Bellini. And that's going to be an easy goal for Nick. So a little bit of a miss hit there by Spinacci. And that, uh, that's going to cost him a goal here because Nick Rodan just read it perfectly and just went to goal. I told you, Bellini was looking around like, hey, am I fouling? This is too easy of a play. But like I said, I think Pablo was looking to hit that ball a little bit to the right, but he kind of hit it right to um, Bellini's offside, the right side of the pony, and just an easy pickup. Now, look at this. Here they come. Pompey Gquine and Brandon. Now Nick. Leaves inside. Ooh, and is he getting another whistler? No, no whistle on the play. Bellini to Bellini. Juancito, Juan Bellini is going to go back, and here comes Juancito. Juancito Bellini on the move, keeping it out here in front of Brandon Phillips. Love when the Porter horses get running right here. Now Big Bo, Bellini Sr. tries to get it. Moved a little further by... Jared left on the field, shot on goal by Zenny, and the high flag. And man, I know Blino oh, looked like Nikki's a little upset with that. I was wondering what was going on there for by Brandon here. Keep an eye on this. I guess this is maybe a miss hit. Oh, yeah, just bounced right at the end on him. Bad luck. And then right here, you see Nikki pointing to the right. He wanted an open back shot there, but it's just a miss hit. It happens. Ball bouncing out there a lot, and Jared Zane's going to finish that one off. And I don't think we're going to have time for another bowler. No, it's going to end our first half. So right there, they're going to keep their two goal difference. And oh, three or maybe three goal. Do we get another goal here? Yeah, seven. Now we got seven to four. So we're going to end this with a three goal difference, and uh, we'll stay with us. We're going to go to a little halftime break, and uh, we'll be right back. 2019 Polar Gear Challenge.
James Foti with Chucker TV. We're here with Juan Bolini. Uh, now that the winter season's ended, we're now in spring polo. Um, it's a little slower. We're not as play playing as many games. Uh, but the Grand Champions Polo Club keeps going on. Is there a different mentality because you're not playing as many games? No, uh, it's not about the mentality. The, the level of polo goes down because we used to play 26 goals. Now we're playing 20 goals. And some of uh, the players we play now, we, it, this is a really good season for ourselves to try different horses, new horses, to try to make the cut for next season. But the mentality is just, when you're a player, when you go to the field, you want to always play well and do the best. So, so what I really believe is that it's more relaxed because uh, it's not just about winning or, or losing. It's just right now, it's just about to play well and, and focus on your horses. And, and, and have a great time. And I think the facility of the Grand Champion uh, Santa Rita provide the fields and the quality of polo that we play in this spring is incredible. We play in 20 gold polo. We, we have in the fields that the best uh, younger American players. You got Grant Gansi, you got Jared Seni, you got Carlos Gracidas Jr., you got Tommy Coringo, you got Juancito Bolini, and actually uh, Justin Daniels. So basically, I think this spring polo has been one of the best spring polo we ever have because the level of quantity and quality of polo that we have. Okay. And uh, there's a lot of hardworking players in the league. Who do you think is the hardest working polo player? Other than me, uh, I think everybody, I, I, it's, 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 I don't know, it's just a hard question uh, uh, for the hard answer because I think in the field, everybody work hard. I mean, and, and sometimes it's like when you're a player in any different sport, you have days. You know, someday you have, you feel that you have it and then you feel like, oh, this is my day. And, and, and I think everybody try hard. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not about uh, who's try hard or no. It's, I think it's, it's a uh, tricky question. You know, it's a good question, but I really, be, everybody try hard and it's not about how hard you try, it's how you wake up that day like any other sport you know but uh, I, uh, I think in my personal opinion I always try and I always all my life I always give 110 percent in the field that's it's in, it's, that's in the way I am built and sure. and I think everybody when it goes to the field I believe everybody will is trying to do a hundred percent yes I don't think who's done more or less it's uh, I don't know you got players like Carlos Garcia like Granty Mark Gansi He's, Mark Gansi is a guy, I have to say, he always try 110%. You never, mm -hmm. you never see Mark Gansi just not try, or, or Granti, or, or Juancito, or Alejandro Novillo Estrada, Sugar, uh, uh, Jared Seni. I mean, the quality of play that we have, I say, everybody try uh, very hard. So it's, it's uh, I, mean, I don't know, I, I think that uh, the level of polo play that we have is like, I don't have any doubt that everybody try the hardest. That was Juan Bellini. I'm James Foti with Chucker TV. Tune in next time. All right, welcome back. Uh, great interview there with Juan Bellini. James, on, uh, right there, the Santa Rita Freedom Farm right there. The uh, AD uh, will thank you for sharing the uh, broadcast today. I can see that you uh, shared it. I remember keeping it. Uh, Farida, watching from England. Thank you from the UK. And uh, sorry about that Westchester Cup uh, U.S. bringing it home, but what you guys had it for a long time, so <laughs> about time. But thanks for t tuning in uh, from England, and of course, get on the Facebook conversation today. Yeah, it looks like uh, Sherilyn watching. You know how you doing? Tuning in, and uh, so and Julia, San Diego watching. Hey, Julia. I know you're tuning in, always checking out Chucker TV. We appreciate the, I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the game. If you're just joining us, well, welcome to the Polo Gear Challenge Cup. And we've got Pommy Gquine up against Sebi Khan here. And uh, it's been Sebi Khan. Let's break it down for you. We had one goal difference to start the game off. If Pommy Gquine got one goal on handicap. And then we had a goal by Brandon Phillips. And then we had a goal by, for Pommy Chiquan and one by Bellini and, and, and Spinacci for Sebi Khan. Made it 2-2 two to two after the first chucker. Then we had another goal by Bellini and another goal by Zinni for the uh, second chucker, making it 4-2, to two, Pommy Chiquan with a goose egg. And then in the third chucker, we had two by Roldan to give them four. And we had one by uh, Pablo Palillo. And then we had 
two by Jared Zenny. Penalty four and one from the field to give them seven goals and a three goal difference here. If, uh, like I said, Pommy Chiquan, we have uh, Brandon Phillip playing the number one, Juan Bellini playing the number two, Nick Rodan playing the number three, and Dr. Scott Swordland playing the number four position. Um, on the other side, the Sebi Khan team, we have Pavel Plio playing the number one, Jared Zenny. Playing the number two, Masito uh, Pablo Spinacci playing the number three, and then Juancito Bellini playing the number four, and there's a good shot of Juan Bellini and Nick Roldan. Talking out a little strategy right there. Of course, Bellini, a cancer survivor, that's where he, why, why he wears the pink. And a uh, very strong individual. Representing, of course. He's like, we're waiting for uh, one more player. And we'll go ahead and get the second half action underway. Field five, Grand Champions Polo Club. And it's going to be Juancito Bellini from a standstill right now. He'll send everybody forward looking for Spinacci. But now it'll be Juan Bellini. And Juan Bellini wearing the number two for the Palmy Chiquan team, but rotating a lot, playing the number four position. Now it's going to be Juancito, his oldest son, getting through the pack right here. Juancito once, twice, shot on goal. And the low flag. And Bellini, like Juancito Bellini, looking for a foul on his dad there. He was thinking, hey, maybe I got him, might have got him, but a little bit too much distance. And it'll be the number two to bring it in here for Pommy Chiquan. Looking for Roldan, Nikki. Angled pass there to the board. Nikki slams on the brakes. Everybody hustling Nikki, and it gets stolen away here by Pablo. Pablo back to the center. Loose ball play, and it'll be Pablo Spinacci to ride that one out. I think Bellini is going to get caught on the right of way violation. Vaughn Miller checking in. What up, Vaughn Jr.? Checking out a little Chucker TV today. Back shot coming right here. This is a pretty easy call. You see that ball going up and down right there across the field in Bellini. He comes in there. He wants a, uh, a one, one meeting two, but I don't believe, well, maybe he's, uh, he's not going to get it. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and call that against him on the right-of-way violation. And uh, so they'll bring this one out from the corner. That ball was inside the 60-yard line, almost in the coffin corner, inside the 30 but no shot on goal there. So they're going to go ahead and bring this one back. And it'll be Jared Zenny again. Two for two, Jared. He's got an open goal penalty two and a penalty four today. And as I said, he's been uh, so strong here the whole spring season. Here comes Zenny. On the penalty four, the worm burner bounces off a pony, actually. And now it'll be Pommy Chiquine to take this one out. And they're going to dodge a bullet here. Now Nick Rodan, nice little move right there. He pops it underneath Spinaccia's pony. Now back to the outside. Nicky taking on the whole team right here. Slows it down to a walk. Tapping, dribbling, trying to make a move. Ducking and diving, bobbing and weaving. Gets to the outside. Now Nick trying to run the toe. Oh, he can't get on the line. Swartland jumps into the rumble seat here. Nikki slams on the brakes. And once again, Nikki taking on the whole team. Roldan <laughs> trying to get by, but there you go. Now Nikki going to the Spurs. Gets this one moving. He's going to release this one from the hundo. But that one, oh, look at Jared Zenny. He pulled a little snooker move again, like he's going to let that one roll off the field, turns the defense into offense, but it gets read well by Brandon Phillip. Brandon across the center, nobody home, picked up by Spinacci. Pablo, oh, bouncing ball. Nick Rodan can't get that one, but Bellini can. Once he told leave this one for Jared, Jared, just to be safe, stays on the near side. Now he'll go back to the offside and crushes one down the center, looking for Pablo Spinacci. Pablo flips it to the near side, a little butter to the, oh, ooh, yeah, and the high flag. And when I say butter, that's butter because he just touches that one a little bit. Put a little butter on the toast. Right here, here comes Spinacci. Running right in your living room. Watch his ball. He's going to flip it to his near side. This is picture perfect right here. Just a little shot to the near side. And then a little butter. 
Boom. Clevito, my brother. ¿Qué pasó, mi hermano? Clevito joining us today. And back to the center. They're going to bowl in here right in front of you. International Rules Tournament conditions, of course. Bowl for one side of the field, start the game off. Second side here for our second half action. I think we're going to have a courtesy change. Yeah, they're doing a courtesy change right now. I hope they did it. And they didn't wait for everybody to get back to the center. Yeah, so we're, we are finishing up our courtesy change here. So we clock stop at the moment. And there you go. There's our final player. And away we go. That ball is going to bounce off and get picked up here. You got to watch out here. Sebi Khan has the Palm Beach Equine team doubled up here in the Fort Chucker. Nikki again doing the ducking and diving, bobbing and weaving move. Now he gets back to the outside. Snap one for me, Nick, right here. They are covering him up, boy. Look at him. <laughs> they, well, you're eight goals, so you know what's going to happen. Nikki's like, whoo, a lot of work. Now, It'll be Bellini. Bellini's going to go into the neck with it at a standstill right here. They'll give him one play. Now he's going to fire one from the sideline. Whoa, you're going to get a whistle right there, and that's an easy call. And this is what I like to see, the give and go right here. As you got Bellini now, controls the pace, goes under the neck with that one to the left, and uh, does, it, uh, does a perfect job, and then he releases it. Oh, and yeah, he's a little late there as, as Nikki gets taken out in front, and that's an uneven ride off. Pretty easy call. You can see that one from behind. And this will be an open goal penalty, two in favor of the Palm Beach Equine team. So, it's going to be Nick, and Nick looks like he. Wants a little oxygen break. <laughs> He's been doing a lot of work out there. But he gets it back. Another goal right here. And uh, so they'll come back to the center with 226. Or we might have another timeout. It looks like they're waiting for some ponies there. Nikki will pick up goal number three. Two from the penalty two line. Javier. How you doing, Javi? Checking in today. Celis, my brother. And I got players watching from all over the place today on a Friday afternoon. I hope you guys are, are well wherever you are watching. Uh, we have beautiful weather down here in southern Florida. And our spring season has been pretty dry. You remember last year, the, uh, we, did, um, we did have some rain outs. Actually, this tournament got rained out last year. And we were going to move it to the final weekend. But then our final weekend got rained out. So it's nice to be able to pick up the polo gear Challenge Cup once again as the Sebicon team wins the bowl in. And man, when they get moving, this Sebicon team. So knock in coming, it'll be Juan Bellini. You see all four Palm Beach Equine players in view right there. Now Bellini's going to launch one off to the far side and try to get Brandon going forward. As I said, they usually play an open style, running and gun and polo. That's why this Palm Beach Equine team lines out so well. And uh, that's the style they played in the finals the other day, the finals of the Spring Challenge Cup. That ball's going to bounce out of bound, and with 140 on the clock, it'll be Bellini with the possession play. Swardland's going to try to get free right there. Now Bellini, he's going to launch one here, looking for Nikki, and backed up there by Jared. Jared gets Bellini running forward, and that's a nice power polo play. Now, ooh, slamming on the brakes, bouncing ball left in here, and Brandon will turn the corner. He can't handle that one. And, man, everybody on Poppy Chiquan just not gathering themselves. Now to be Nick, well done, Spinacci. Leans way out of the saddle. Now the give and go, looking for Pablo, but stole away by Bellini. And we got good pace here in the fourth chart. Now it'll be... Nikki, he'll take it back to the inside. Roll Dan. Nikki, once, twice. Now he takes it back. Now he's slowing the ball again, ducking and diving, bobbing and weaving. He's going again, stolen away. And now picked up again here by Swartland. And time's going to tick down here. And our four chucker is it'll be Jared Zenny and Spinacci doing a good job taking the man out right there. Uh oh, broken play. And this is what Palm Beach Equine needed. Brandon inside the red zone. And he'll pick up another goal right there, number one, and a much needed goal. And it just shows you that patience is a virtue. 
And right here, Brandon, he comes in and gets taken out. Then he gets a loose ball play, gets 55 inches out in front of Zinni, and a perfect approach shot, and the easy finish. And we'll be right back for our fit checker play. The club is absolutely fabulous. If you're a golfer, the greens, the bunkers, the fairways are in fabulous condition. If you've not played this course before, you need to play the course. And if you did play before, you'll be amazed by the difference in the quality of this course. The people here are friendly. The staff is excellent. The course is in great condition. And it's a lot of fun to be here. Uh, we bought it two and a half years ago, had a three year project to totally renovate the course which we completed in 19 months. We've now got two restaurants, championship course. It's immaculate, pristine. Everybody will see as they play today and we're, we're looking forward to a great day. They've turned it around and it's unbelievable what they've done to it in just a couple of years. They've restored it to what is really a gem in Wellington. It's an absolutely tremendous golf course. It's in great condition. All right, welcome back. Uh, let's see if this Palm Beach Equine team, ooh, I hope, ooh, 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 look, I like it. It looks like you're getting a little energy out there. Uh, I want to see see what happens here. Palm Beach Equine, they need to get fired up as they, uh, they're never playing the game they usually play, but they're only within two goals. And here you go, Grand Champ, well, 85 degrees, partly cloudy. Oh, you got to love that, right? Southern Florida, springtime. And that's perfect weather. That sounds like boating weather to me. And but we're playing polo. And again, this is one of those ones gonna go right down the end. You gotta watch out, Sebicon, because this Palm Beach Equine team, they wait to the end and roll Dan's on the big bay pony running the turn. Nikki shot on goal from a hundred, bounced off a pony right there, and it'll get dragged forward by Jared Zenny. Looks like Raul ruled Dan in the corner over there. Nikki's dad in the white shirt and shorts. Getting a little suntan here. Now, oh, I love the pace here. Broken mallet by Bellini. And he's still gonna go in there though and control the pace. It's stolen away by Nick. Nick's on a, he is he's ready to go this chucker. Look at Nick. Gonna do the Nickaroo under the neck he goes. Well done, Nikki. Like the Bay Pony runs hard, man. He's, he's gotten a lot done on this one over the course of the spring season. Pablo, well done. Pelito not trying to turn that ball. Bellini was right there in the rumble seat. Now Spinacci going forward. Pablo with the approach shot. Spinacci with the goal shot. Spinacci with the high flag. Well done, Pablo Spinacci. Uno, dos y tres. Finishes that one off. And nothing to do but look at this one. Look at Spinacci, perfect approach shot. And then he gets in front right here and watch how he sets up this ball in front of his horse's pony's neck. And that is a sweet neck shot. Perfect, Pablo Spinacci. Very strong in the saddle as I told you, Spinacci, man. He, uh, it's all about the approach shot. Three goal difference once again, nine to six. Let's see if the Palm Beach Equine team can answer. Oh yeah, Sebicon, give and go, Spinacci. Oh, Jared, oh, a little help from the pony. And the finish by Jared Zenny as uh, he's back on that little bay. I told you that little, he gets so much done on this pony. But right here, win the offensive attack as Spinacci, and this is a great learning tool. Watch Spinacci fires the first ball out of the bowling and then Jared has all day long to finish this one. He taps it, checks his pony down, and the finish.
Now wait for Jared and Dr. Swarden, and it looks like Nikki jumped on some fresh legs. Brandon's gonna try to get in there and move it around. Now they leave it behind, and it's gonna be Nikki. Nikki goes into the corner right here. He'll slow it back down. Ooh, there's a ride off for you. And Bellini, well done, Juancito. Good riding there by the number four in the white, showing his horsemanship. Ooh, they come together right there. Nikki doing the ducking and diving, bobbing and weaving move again. He wants a call there, and I guess he's going to get one. So we'll see. You make the call on this one. Here comes Nikki doing the ducking and diving move right here. He ducks, and then he dives. I don't know. They're going to call that one on number one, but it looked to me like Nikki was pulling his pony up. Um, ooh. But they're going to go ahead and call it. Maybe they called an earlier one. Looked like to me like he got rubbed a little bit before in the earlier play. And, uh, but they're definitely going to call the rubbing. It looked like Spinacci rubbed him first because it looked like Pablo, the final back shot, he was clean as the window was opening. But another open goal here for Nick. And Nicky Roldan's 100% from the penalty line, and that's going to be his third, but that's a penalty three. So he has one pen or two penalty twos, a penalty, um, a penalty three, and one from the field. He gave him four goals, and they're back up to three goals again. So another big bowling right here is uh, they can get out in front here. See if the Pommage Equine can get it back within two. You don't want to go down by too many goals with the Sebicon team. That one's going to bounce off the pony right there, and it'll be Brandon Phillips. Brandon rubbing right there against the number one. He takes it for a little bit. Now he's going to do the control. So definitely Pommage Equine going with a different strategy. They don't want to run with the Sebicon team, and I can, I can kind of agree with that strategy as, you know, this – Sebicon team, they line out so well to run and gun, so you kind of got to change it up a little bit. So they're going to the control game, and we'll see if it works out. Now, on the move right here, Brandon comes across. Yeah, and you're going to get called reaching right there. So they're going to call this one against the man on the gray pony. Penalty five from the spot. Reaching is the call, and it'll be Jared Zenny. Jerry on a stout chestnut horse. Going to hit this one from center, and this is what I'm talking about. He lays that one 130 in the air, gets taken forward by Pablo, and the finish, and, well, I'm going to say it, the perfect power polo play. Hammers that one from almost over center field, Jared Zenny. Watch his play, and then it lays just in front of Pablo. Look at Pablo. He takes the man out, then he goes to the near side. He wins that one, and now the finish that is a superb job by the man number one in the white jersey. I mean, he takes out Bellini, takes a near side shot, pushes it forward, and then he beats Dr. Swarland to that ball, and then he finishes it on the offside. Man, what are you going to do? Hard to stop that play. And Pablo will pick up his second goal of the day, and not just that, he's going to push his Sebicon team back so three goals. This is the first time, to, or yeah. So they're gonna be eleven here. Four goals now. To seven. Two oh eight left here in the fabulous fit chucker. Tommy Chiquan. Every time they answer, the Sebigon team just comes across uh, very strong again. Of course, our final tournament of the spring season will be the Memorial. So make sure you join us on the twenty fourth to the twenty sixth. That'll be our final tournament and then uh, we'll be getting organized to see y'all in the mountains as we head to the Aspen Valley Polo Club and of course Chucker TV will be live there and wow what a schedule we got going on for there let's finish this fifth Chucker action and I'll go over uh, before the sixth Chucker I'll go over the 2019 Aspen Valley Polo Club summer schedule for you all right 140 on the clock is going to be Swartland. Yeah, Dr. Swartland's first run to the goal. And he's going to pick one up. And well done, Scotty. And that's going to be Scott's first opportunity. And a good finish by Dr. Swartland. As they come in right here, Scotty. 
Takes it forward right here. Great, great. Keeps his shoulders down, head follows. Keeps it out in front of Spinacci. Spinacci is going to fall in the rumble seat, playing for the miss right here. But Swarland says, oh, yeah, I got you. And well done, Scotty. Good looking bay pony right there. Of course, Palm Beach Equine Clinic. Strength of veterinary care in, around the world. And of course, here in the Wellington and Florida area. Top notch, Nick Rodan. Nikki working hard. Spinacci gets the hook done. Brandon steals it away. Let's see if they can finish the fifth chucker like they did the fourth chucker. And that's with Brandon Phillips scoring a goal. Brandon keeping it in here, flips it to the outside. Near side neck shot the goal. That one will fly across the goal mouth and get cleared out by Pablo. Pablo looking for Spinacci now. Spinacci. 35 seconds on the clock, going to take his time and line this one out and get the, whoa, oh yeah, Zenny running forward. Jared now the give and go, and they had full steam right here. Zenny, oh, bouncing ball overrides. Spinacci picks up the bouncing ball, lays it back in front for Jared. Jared out of the air. Spinacci out of the air. That ball will go just wide, and Pommage Econ will dodge a bullet here, and we'll end our fifth chucker. So 11 to 8. Can Pommage Equine come back here in our sixth and final chucker? Well, check us out. Stay tuned. We'll be right back for that sixth and final chucker. Takes it away and now gives it over to Gondolito. Gondolito picks that ball up now, making a run back down the other way. Gondolito cuts that ball back towards the goal. Working his way back to the center. Looking good. Gondolito doing what he does best. Putting points on the board. Looking good. Gondolito. What a play. Que jugador. Now Rodrigo down there. Rodrigo still with the play. Andrade takes that ball. He's inside the 60s. He's in the red zone. Rodrigo fires straight on through. What a great play. Mannix comes in to pick this ball back up. Freddie with a nice little three-quarter neck shot there. Now Fred lines up the shot. Now will he do it? No, he's going to run this one through. Freddie still with the ball. He's down there in the red zone. Now he shoots. Will it go? What a play. Mannix, beautiful. Mark Ganzi going downfield for the pass. Now Rodrigo fires that ball down there. Ganzi comes in. Ganzi moves over, picks up the man, and now picks up the ball. He's in the red zone. Mark Ganzi shot, looking good. Ganzi sends that one straight on through to now give his team a five-goal lead. Gonzalito winds up, undefendable. Straight on through, Audi the victor, 2015 Piaget Gold Cup. All right, welcome back. And man, it looks like Johnny Walsh in the house. What a polo star. Check out a little Chucker TV. This is the only guy who actually watches Chucker TV while riding sets. I got to tell you, I've seen it. He does it. Shoots videos of himself while he's watching Chucker TV. Thanks for checking out, Johnny. Of course, Juan Salinas, Tiburon, checking out Michelle Vogel. And of course, Richard coming into it. And you know, Gavin Robinson, you've been watching this a long time from uh, Zambia, and you got it dialed in, so thank you for checking us out once again. Let's talk about the Aspen Valley Polo Club as Juan Bellini brings this one in here for our sixth and final chucker, 11 to 8. Now, uh, a lot of tournaments going on there. They start July 3rd with the Independence Cup, and they're going to play all summer long, and it's going to go all the way to September, uh, the first week of September, where they'll do the Triple Crown Apollo Trophy. They're also going to be playing a lot down at the Denver Polo Club, Valiente, of course, and the Denver Polo Club down there. They're going to be playing a lot of indoor and outdoor tournaments, so you want to make sure you check out AspenValleyPoloClub.com and check out our summer season season as Sebucon on the move here. They've controlled every chucker. They were uh, two to two after the first, four to two after the second, seven to four after the third, eight to six after the fourth, 11 to eight after the fifth. And here we stand for our sixth and final chucker. Bellini, Juan now. He'll go to the, ooh, miss hit there. 
and backed up again by Pablo. And I don't think Pablo's missed one ball all day long. Now the two Bellinis come together. They'll slow this one down. Juan's going to leave it for Brandon. I like this play. Now he takes it forward. I'm not sure about that. And now he's got to hit between a bunch of horses' legs. And he gets backed out of there by Pelu and stolen away here again by Brandon. So Brandon works it back to the inside. And now Brandon will get a goal. And that will get the, uh, hopefully the floodgates open. Is that's going to be third goal of the day for Brandon. And they're mixing it up well. We have one for Swordland, three for Brandon, another four for Nikki, as you're going to watch Brandon run right in here and kind of, oh, he hit that one to the head, hit that one to the outside, I guess, uh, Pablo, to make sure that ball went in the hoop. And back to center we go, and here we go. See if they can keep this flow. As they are going to stop the clock, and we're going to have a tech time. So 9 to 11. Anybody's ball game still. And as I was telling you earlier, as you see in the background there, Pablo Spinacci and Nick Rodan helping each other out there on the field. And it looks like both players are organized and ready to go. And we'll get this uh, six and final chucker under the way, underway. So it looked like Felicity is joining us today. What's up, Felicity? Uh, Felicity was gonna go and take a polo lesson. She told me she was gonna take a polo lesson. Now, Felicity, we didn't see you out there taking a polo lesson. So you gotta come out and take a polo lesson as we do have the polo school here at the Grand Champions Polo Club. Of course, standalone USPA sanctioned polo club is dedicated to teaching polo of all ages. Come on out and learn how to play the game as Juan Bellini, who actually learned how to play the polo school, takes it forward, actually learned from his dad right there. Now it gets back to the center. Look at Zinni, he's gonna try to run by. Juan Bellini makes the hook and the ball, picked up here now by Juancito, and that is a misfire off the left side there as he pulls the trigger. Whole goal, everybody was blocking the goal there. And uh, Juancito hits it off the left side, though, and they'll regroup here. And it'll be Juan Bellini Sr. to take the, uh, do the honors here. Now Juan, looking for Brandon, but he's going to be covered up here by Spinacci very quickly. Spinacci playing the number three position perfectly for the Sebicon team today. Good riding here by Pablo. Pablo moves it forward just a little bit, but stolen away now by Nikki. Roldan's going to go the speed stick on the far side. Fusta, 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 as we learned today. That's how you say that in Espanol. We learned that today. And now it's going to be picked up again by Buambolini Jr. That one will bounce off a pony. And it will be Spinacci to back that up with a 54-inch taco. We learned that today, too. The taco. And remember, you got to wear a Costco on the polo field to play polo. Now it gets backed up again by Spinacci, and it'll be off to the races by Pablo Pelito on the move. He gets by one polo player. Now it gets ridden off there by Swordland and turned the corner here by now Bellini. Bellini takes a mallet. Ooh, takes a taco away from Pablo. Slowing the pace, though, and it's going to work against him here as the Sebicon team understands with this two goal difference here, that you go ahead and take your time and turn the ball, we don't mind. As the clock goes tick, 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 and it'll be Spinacci once again to take it in behind, roll Dan and control the pace here for Sebi Khan. Spinacci, ooh, gets by one player, but just enough to leave that ball for Jared Zenny. Zenny's gonna launch one, and that's what he's been doing all day long, launching them. Leaves it there, good rotation here, and good unselfish polo by the Sebicon team as he'll leave this one behind for Bellini. Now, Juancito. 
Juancito, good ball control. Well done, Bellini. Taking it forward, keeping it in between two or three players. Getting so strong with the ball right now. Now he keeps it going forward, takes the mallet away. You know there's got to be a free man. There he is, and there's the high flag. And that's just a great polo play as, Jer as uh, Bellini works it in. And once you see two players come together, well, there's got to be a free man somewhere. Simple math, and it's going to be one player right here. He leaves it for another, and then Jared is a good finisher. And Zenny with the next shot, checks the score, checks the time. So let's change ponies, and uh, let's try to edge this one out here now with the three-goal difference. Jared Zenny leading the pack here. Five goals on the day, three from the field, two from the penalty line for the number two. Six-goal player, and here you go. They win another bowling. They won 80% of the bowlings today. The boys in the white jerseys. And look at this ride off here by Pablo. He takes Dr. Swarland to the center of the field. And that one will go off to the right side. And the low flag as the clock ticks down. And that'll be the end. So that's going to end our first game here as uh, Bellini's going to go ahead and stick and ball. Play out the end, I guess as they usually play out the last 30 seconds, but it looks like most of the players are gonna pull up. Once again, thank you for uh, checking in with us. Oh, Grant Gansey. Grant Gansey's watching Chucker T. I think he's supposed to play. He is. Grant Gansey checking out Chucker TV, but getting ready to play. That just shows you the players are out there preparing themselves for the game. Good luck, Double G. And, um, and again, it looks like Jennifer Burke is joining in right at the end. I hope you guys tune in for our 5 o'clock game as everyone here congratulates themselves. Once again, Pommy Chiquan, Dr. Scott Swirland, Brandon Phillip, Nick Rodan, and Juan Bellini. They're going to get edged out here, though, by the Semicon team. And it will be, of course, the Pablo Polito. And uh, they have a very strong team here with Pablo Spinacci, uh, Jared Zenni, and Juan Cito Bellini. Very strong team. This team could win the whole thing. I'm, I'm gonna, uh, we're going to have to see this next game is going to be tight. Well, I'm Dale Schwetz, and we're going to get ready for our second game of the day here, of course, going on to 5 o'clock. Thank you for making us the leaders of polo broadcasting, and we'll see you at our next game. We love the polo.